The McRaven Mansion is one of those places where even paranormal investigators start questioning what's really going on. There's so much activity. There's benevolent spirits, the residual side of it all. But then there's something else, something more sinister, something more intelligent. Will the spirits of the dead we encounter show us hospitality and peace? All I know is that we're here to make paranormal contact. I think it's interesting this part of the house. This house was, this is the second part of the house that we built in 1836. And um, this was Mary Elizabeth's bedroom the age of 15 in 1836 that she actually gave birth in the bed that is still sitting in her room. Now when she gave birth, sadly shortly afterwards, she died from complications and infection, which was normal at the time. That was when Stephen took the baby to move back to Yazoo City. Um, so he and Karen got there, but he ended up committing suicide shortly thereafter. I am Jane Austen and I'm the general manager of the McRaven Tour. Mary, is that you? Whispered your name. She says, It's okay, Mary. Oh. Uh, something just knocked in the inside of that armoire right behind you. Oh my arm. god. Are you alright? Listen again. Did you miss it? It's okay. Are you showing me how you feel and the sadness that you feel over the loss of your child? Very, very sorry. Look, look, on the bed. No, it's the Ram too. Both of them, look, look. Mary, I'm so sorry about your baby. Sorry, Mary. I'm so sorry. I could feel her pain while we were in the room. And the loss that she felt of not being able to raise her daughter, Karen. Yes. I feel like that when we go into these locations, if you go in before you start filming and you get a rapport with the spirits, I feel like they get to know you and they want to talk to you even more then because they feel like that you're their friend. And that's what I was trying to accomplish with Mary. Next, Jan and Stephanie investigate the newest part of the house, built in 1849 by John H. Bob. Bob was a wealthy businessman and supporter of the Confederacy. Actually came home to find Union soldiers stomping on his roses. Got a little upset about that, got into a little scuffle with them. Well, Slocum should have sent him home with an armed guard, but didn't think anything was going to come of it. So he sent Bob home. Well, meanwhile, his wife was here in the home and she saw 25 more soldiers around in the corner. So she sent a young girl to try and go warn Mr. Bob to not come home. Well, the young girl took a different route than Mr. Bob, so it ended up not running into him. And that was when the soldiers just up the block uh, actually shot him in the head and the gut while his wife heard the entire thing in the house. Are there any spirits here right now close to us? If you could come and talk to us, that would be really nice. We would appreciate it. Just as Stephanie reaches out to Mr. Bob, a noise can be heard coming from the other room. He's heard that, right? Mr. Bob, was that you? There it is again. <gasps> There's movement behind me. Oh, I've got goosebumps. I'm very, very, very cold. I just heard two footsteps come from behind you. Yeah, I'm, I'm really cold. Somebody is right. Oh, my don't God. move, don't move. Somebody's don't right move. behind don't me. Don't move. I'm going to grab the rim. It's okay, Mr. Bob. Is that you, Mr. Bob, or is it Mr. Murray? Next, Jan and Stephanie investigate Andrew Glass's room, the oldest section of the house built in 1797. Andrew Glass was a murderer and highwayman. 
He and his brothers rode together and terrorized the people of Louisiana. One night, Glass and his brothers were attacked by a group of French soldiers. All of the men but Glass were killed. Glass arrived home badly injured and his wife, fearing that her land would be seized if her husband were found dead, and knowing that Glass had been with other women, slit his throat. She had her servants cut him up into small pieces and scatter him across the grounds. If you're here, Andrew, and you can hear me speaking, can you tell me why? Why did your wife kill you? Is it because you cheated on her? What's the real story? Did he just say Emma? Was your wife's name Emma? Andrew, was your wife's name Emma? I swore it said Emma, it was clear. Those people that you killed, now that you're dead, are they with you? Those people you murdered, are they, do they haunt you? Yeah, some. Yes, some. Another hot spot in the mansion is Mr. Bob's changing room. Mr. Bob spent a lot of time here, and he becomes very active when people intrude in his space, especially women. It was in the middle of an investigation, uh, so it was like midnight, pitch black, and I was setting something up on the dresser when I heard footsteps on the porch. Um, well, I kind of brushed it off, thought maybe it's a sound coming from somewhere else, there's a lot of people in the house. Well, that was when the window frame started shaking like, violently. It wasn't just reverberation or anything, the whole piece was shaking. Mr. Bob was standing just outside the window, staring back at me, and we made eye contact and just froze looking at each other. I could have counted the wrinkles under his eyes. Is that your top hat, Mr. Bob? Look, 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 look. Which one is it? Is it the one outside? The one outside. I didn't see the lights going off, I just... Okay, let's continue, let's continue. Sorry, right. I'll, I'll switch this back on. Okay. Mr. Bob, we're sorry about what happened to you and what those soldiers did to you. It must have been terrifying for your wife. years to come after your death, it wasn't easy for her, right? Do you hear that? No, I'm not kidding, I'm not kidding. It's showing me that the temperature is rising by six degrees. That's what it was last time. I had the never temperature. Heard I've never. No. The only reason we're here is to make contact with you. That's the only reason we've come here. Whoever's here around us right now, you need to please make your presence known if you would, please. That's the only reason we've come here, is to learn about you and to make contact with you.